the pleasure of speaking with Sylvia Coloca. It is such a pleasure. How are you today? I'm good. I'm dialing in from, from Sydney, Australia, and it's, it's, it's morning here where I believe it's nighttime over there. So that never uh, seems to <laughs> freak me out when I think about all the time differences and the fact that we can all still be connected. That's, uh, that's the beauty of it. But yeah, all good. I mean, hanging in there. Absolutely. I mean, this has been such difficult times, Sylvia. How have you been spending quarantine over there in Australia? Um, look, I have to say, in Australia, we're pretty lucky. We've got a lot of space. So um, it, it, it hasn't been too bad at all, to be honest, because, you know, we've got a, we've got a backyard and, and even the, the possibility to be um, breathing some fresh air every day. And also the lockdown in Australia uh, has not been as intense as it's been in other parts of the world, like, for example, in Italy. And so we have been out, been able to, you know, go out for exercise or go to shops if need be without having to have an auto certification and, and all of those things that contribute to quite a bit of, uh, of stress. And, um, and also we didn't get a lot of uh, cases. And, um, and so I think, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, when you compare it to what uh, a lot of other people that we know and love have been through, this has been really quite, um, quite easy. And the weather in Australia is always nice. So um, that also helps a lot. Um, but yes, I'll tell you what, the, one of the main challenges is even like coordinating this Zoom call was such a task because um, while well, I live with my husband, our three kids, a dog and a guinea pig, and all of them are very needy, including the guinea pig. And, uh, and so at nine in the morning, when two of my children have to log on to their school home learning programs and occupy two computers, the toddler Luna had her online ballet class just before I connected with you. So I was sort of dancing around with her doing um, funny things with my toes and my hands and, and just look at, looking at the clock and going like, oh, I have to, I have to speak to Canada in 10 minutes. <laughs> and all the while trying to, you know, to brush my hair and do my makeup. And, you know, it's like, oh God, <laughs> this is not easy at all, at all. And I locked myself in this room and I said, I'm gone. I don't exist. <laughs> if any, unless the house is burning down, do not come to me. It's good. Maybe I should do this more often. Pretend that yeah. I'm on important conference calls or something. Exactly. Like twice a day, say, listen, I've got a very important thing. Don't bother me for an hour. Not even the guinea pig. <laughs> exactly. Now, talk to me a little bit about your family as well. Have you been able to, to get some quality time in there? Do you usually spend a lot of time with your family? Um, oh, there's been a lot of quality time. <laughs> That's, 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 been, that's been plentiful, which obviously is one of the upsides. I have to say that um, I think as much as, especially my middle child, Miro, who's nine, as much as he's looking forward to going back to school and seeing his friends, I think he will miss this really cozy time of having, um, having us with him, supporting him with his schooling and just playing and just be around him the whole time. Um, so that, that's been definitely really comforting. And I know a lot of people that don't have kids and they only hear the parents, you know, tearing their hair out going, Oh my God, the home learning thing. That's so hard. And working from home with the kids. And they, they, they think that, Oh, thank God. I don't have children to think of at this time. Um, I have to say, uh, it's, it's actually, you know, it's been equally my downfall at times. I've had bad days around the home learning thing as well but it has been my saving grace as well because I am very social and very tactile person and the fact that I can't hug anyone has made me just basically hug my children my dog um and the guinea pig the whole <laughs> time because uh, I'm really starved for that kind of uh, physical contact but just having having people around me so I, I couldn't do isolation in pure isolation I just um, I'd be very 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 sad so I know that I, I I like to whinge a bit about the difficulties of it but really um uh, yeah I'm very very happy and you mentioned you know speaking to people being with people and that is pretty much the entire concept of Sylvia's Italian table you welcome people you connect through food how has that changed since all of this started do you still do that virtually or, or something along those lines 
not really and that's uh and that's that's really hard actually you know what um um one of the one of the guests from sylvia's italian table magda Svanski, who's a phenomenal Australian actress, comedian, and, and, and writer, uh, who was on, I think, episode two of Sylvia's Italian Table. She actually FaceTimed me the other day because she was trying to make one of my cakes and she wasn't sure about the texture of the, of the batter. And so we had this really funny FaceTime call where she was whipping eggs and showing me the texture. And I thought, well, this is almost as good as it gets, you know, if, having like uh, friends here that I can cook with or that I can cook um, for. And um, so that, that felt really, really lovely and, and a new way to actually speak to my friends um, outside of seeing them face to face. Um, so I, I thought, well, that, there are certain um, things that we're learning from this time. And one such thing for me has been no texting. I mean, I do text my friends, but now, these days I really, I call them. I spend hours on the phone like I'm a teenager. It's like, it's ridiculous. I've never been on the phone so much to my friends. It's like, I need to hear their voices. It's like, so weird. No, it's amazing. <laughs> No, 100%. I think right now people are learning to finally, I guess, connect digitally. There's grandparents, there's people that are, you know, getting accustomed to technology for the first time. Yeah. Thinking back on, on so many wonderful memories that you've had in these past few weeks, is there a particular moment that sort of made you realize, okay, what world are we living in? You know, something massive that changed for you or changed your perspective? Um, well, look, I was supposed to, I was supposed to be in Italy at this time, um, to my mom and dad live in Milan. So I was supposed to go and stay with them and take two of my children along and, and do an opera there. Cause I don't know if you guys know I'm a, I'm an opera singer. Um, mm -hmm. or I sort of gave my career a bit of a shift. Um, and so I still, I still do that occasionally. And so I was, I was so looking forward to, flying back to Italy and, and having time with my mum and dad and uh, all the stars were aligned, the, the perfect job, the perfect location. And then this happened and, um, and I realised that all that time that I spent organising all this and, and fretting about all the details, and we have to put the dog in place and, and my husband and my other son can go and, and do this. And I, you know, the stress that um, sort of derived from trying to micromanage this whole operation was for nothing because I couldn't go and, um, and I couldn't do any of those things that I had planned for. And it sort of made me think that maybe I need to stop, you know, micromanaging everything and let things sort of happen a bit more organically and chaotically if need be. Um, that's because ultimately, we have zero control and we can pretend we do and, and then we get stressed when things don't go our way or we can just really um, be a bit more happy-go-lucky um, and appreciate what we can do when we can do it, you know? We'll so. definitely all be more grateful after this, that's for sure. Definitely. Now, you mentioned your parents in Italy. How, how are they doing? I mean, Italy was one of the hardest hit countries. Oh, and Milan, because mum and dad and my brother and my cousins, they're all in Milan. And that was one of the hot spots. So I have to say, um, it's been really hard to, uh, to see what's been going on and being so far apart. It's not that I, I wish I was there, because that's a bit of a strange wish to have. But in a way, there's parts of me that do, because at least... I could look after my mum and dad and not that they need looking after, but it's more for my own peace of mind. Uh, I mean, we've been on FaceTime uh, all the time and, um, and that's been a great comfort. If there's one thing that you're looking forward to, as soon as they open the doors and they say, Sylvia, you can go anywhere, you can do whatever you want. What's the first thing post COVID that you want to do? I want to go home to Italy. I want to go back. I really want to go back. Um, and just um, hug people. Oh my God, I want to hug people. Of course, just that human interaction is, is what everyone's missing. Yeah, now, Sylvia. So weird. It is, it is. 
you have you have so many fans back home in Canada. You have so many people that follow your shows. And I want to know, is there a specific message or something that you want to share with all of your TLN viewers? Oh, I just want to thank you all so much. Um, I love receiving all the, the messages um, on Instagram and people tagging me. And I love to see that you're making the recipes. It's still like, it really blows my mind to think that um, the recipes that I... I I create for my work here can can travel and can can and can make you and can make other people connect with either their origins or just with a with a culture that they feel akin to. And um, I don't know. I feel like food, especially Italian cuisine, is largely just an excuse to uh, be with people because it's never really about. Uh, complication it's always about simplicity flavors and gathering and um which is one thing that i do miss dearly and so to see that um that same sentiment is uh propagated in this way it's um it's re really heartwarming you know funnily enough i've got um i've got a lot of connections with canada because a lot of people from my mom's village in abruzzo migrated to canada and so uh, and then, you know, they, they would return to the village in summertime and uh, they, you know, bring back Canadian stories and, and then they have their children who grew up bilingual. And so it's, um, yeah, it's always sort of been in the background of, of in, in, in my life in a way. There's been a connection with Canada for sure.